Hello there. My name is Dr. Anu Iragu. I'm a medical doctor from Kenya. This YouTube video was created for the purpose of learning as part of an assignment for the attainment of postgraduate diploma in diabetes at the University of South Wales in UK. You're all welcome to listen and learn. Diabetes is a common chronic medical condition that is associated with high blood sugar. More than half a billion of the world population have diabetes. Diabetes is associated with the long-term complications, which affects the blood vessels. When the small blood vessels are affected, these are called microvascular complications. When the large blood vessels are affected by diabetes, it's known as the macrovascular complications. Today, our discussion the problems that affect the small blood vessels as a result of high blood sugar or diabetes. The small blood vessels of three main organs, which includes the eyes, which is called the nephropathy, or the kidney, which is known as the nephropathy, or blood vessels to the feet, which is referred to as diabetic uh, peripheral neuropathy. In this video, we shall focus on diabetes retinopathy. First, I'll take you through the structure of the eye. The eye has two chambers, the small anterior part and the posterior part. And the focus for today will be the posterior part where the retina lies. And the retina is the inner layer of the eye. As you can see, the bigger chambers is filled with the vitreous humor. Diabetes retinopathy, you see, it's a disease of the retina. It contains cells that sense light. The macula, which is part of the retina, is a more sensitive part of the retina. When the retina senses light, the signals are best sent to the brain through the optic nerve. This is a reason we're able to see images. Diabetes retinopathy is a disease affecting the small vessels to the eye retina. Due to high blood sugar, it can occur in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. However, in type 1 is more common because of the early onset of the disease. Type 2 diabetes, it can be diagnosed at the time the patient appears for the third time for diagnosis. In the leading cause of blindness among its patients, there are two types of diabetes retinopathy. One, we have the background retinopathy, also referred to as non-proliferative diabetes retinopathy. This is a milder form of diabetes retinopathy. The second type of diabetes retinopathy is a proliferative diabetes retinopathy. This is a more severe form, occurs uh, much later, especially when the sugars are not well controlled and it's a leading cause of the blindness in diabetes retinopathy. One in three of every patient with diabetes has diabetes retinopathy. And 93 million people in the world suffer from this disease. 8,000 eyes are lost every year as a result of diabetes retinopathy. What leads to diabetes retinopathy? The retina contains small blood vessels, and these are responsible for providing nutrients and oxygen to the retina. When the person has high blood sugar, like in diabetes, the high blood sugars damages these blood vessels, and these become leaky and they swell in the retina. The blood vessel may also get blocked. What happens next? The blood flow to the retina is reduced. This leads to formation of scars in the retina. New blood vessels start to grow in the retina, which is known as neovascularization. These vessels, however, are abnormal and they are weak and they can easily bleed into the vitreous, known as the vitreous hemorrhage. This occurs in the advanced stages of retinopathy. It can also cause swelling in the macular area referred to as a macular edema. The retina can get disconnected, referred to the retinal detachment. What are the factors that can cause diabetes retinopathy? When you have long-standing diabetes, when your diabetes is poorly controlled, when you also have uncontrolled blood pressure, when you're a smoker, when you have high cholesterol, and for pregnant women who already have diabetes retinopathy, their disease may worsen during the pregnancy. What are the symptoms of diabetic retinopathy? In the early stages of the disease, one does not have any symptoms. But later, as the disease is progressing, one may experience visual problems where you have trouble in reading, 
or seeing objects that are far, your vision becomes blurry, feelings of a curtain be pulled over your eyes, floating spots in your vision, and this could be visual loss due to the bleeding, retinal detachment, or the macular edema. When you're diagnosed with diabetes, ensure you're on a regular follow-up, make sure your sugars are well controlled, your blood pressure if you're hypertensive is well controlled, you should be taking a cholesterol drug if your cholesterol levels are high. If you're smoking, you should be encouraged to stop smoking. Your doctor will advise you the best timing for screening of your retinopathy. For the type 1 diabetes, this is between 3 to 5 years after the diagnosis. Whereas for patients who have type 2 diabetes, the screening for diabetes retinopathy should be done at the time of the diagnosis. If you're pregnant, Make sure you check your eyes are checked before pregnancy or three months into the pregnancy and a repeat check should be done after one year. The doctor may examine you in the office or can send you to a trained healthcare worker to examine your eyes. The three main techniques that can help a doctor to visualize the retina. We have the fundoscopy or the ophthalmoscopy. They also slit lab examination plus the digital photography that can be done to the retina. First, you have the fundoscopy. This is examination of the retina by the eye doctor. Fundoscope is a special torch with a magnifying lens and light to examine the back of the inside of the eye. The doctor is able to see the enlarged retina with the blood vessel and the optic disc. The doctor may examine the retina directly, which is referred as direct examination, or indirectly with the doctor wearing a bright light positioned on their forehead which is known as an indirect examination or a slit lamp examination where you sit in front of a slit lamp. Retinal photography requires a digital camera which is used to capture the two field retinal photographs for each eye. The photographs can then be sent electronically to the doctor for interpretation. They can be compared with the previous photos to show the progression of the disease. If discovered early enough, there's no need for treatment for most of the cases. That is when you have the background retinopathy. But what you need to ensure that your sugars and blood pressure are well controlled, and this prevent the progression of the disease to the more severe form of the retinopathy. However, you make sure that you have your regular checkups as advised by your doctor. When is treatment required? For patients with advanced disease, those who have severe form of background retinopathy, as well as proliferative diabetic retinopathy, they require some form of treatment. What are these treatments? The doctor may choose any of the following. One, we have the laser photocoagulation. Two, the special injection of drugs into the eye. Three, we can have surgery. Laser photocoagulation is the most preferred method of treatment. The doctor will numb the eye by injecting a numbing medication. No pain is felt during the procedure. A laser light is directed to the retina. It creates tiny bands inside the eye with a beam of light. This treats the abnormal blood vessels, preventing them from leaking. Your vision will be blurry for a day or so after the procedure. Each eye is treated separately. The session should be repeated every four to six weeks. The second mode of treatment is via the intravitreal injections of antivascular growth factor inhibitors. These are the drugs that block the growth of new blood vessels. The doctor will numb your eye and a quick injection will be done into your eye. No pain is experienced during this procedure. Repeated injections may be required. And the third mode of treatment is eye surgery, which is also referred as vitrectomy. It is done in a hospital under local anesthesia or general anesthesia. You don't have to be admitted in the hospital. It involves making a small incision in your eye and removing the blood from the middle of the eye where the bleeding had occurred. In conclusion, diabetes retinopathy is a common microvascular complication of diabetes. It can occur in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Regular screening is the most important approach to diagnose the disease early. Controlling the blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol level, and not smoking are the most important preventive measures 
for diabetics retinopathy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, it's a goodbye.